Okay, so we started. So welcome everyone. Today is 5th of May, 2021. Today is 1 p.m. Uh, British summer time. So we are here for online workshop practice milling session. And I want to first share my screen to introduce you a little bit to the, uh, what we will do. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Great. So safety. Safety is very important in, in this, uh, in the Parisel workshop and like in every workshop in the world. And we have uh, to wear safety goggles at all times, like uh, when we are using an equipment. And for safety shoes, again, if we are uh, handling heavy things, this is a must to have. Okay, so um, these two are kind of non-optional and mandatory equipment. And we have some other ones like lab coat you can wear to avoid oil spill for uh, milling and late. Right, and we have some uh, uh, another option like earplugs for protecting you from the noise of the machine, and we have uh, disposable gloves, right, to handle uh, handle the workpiece to avoid uh, cuts and uh, uh, touching oil. In a, working with any machine, especially power machines, uh, like we, the ones you, you working at high voltage, uh, please, please. Uh, make sure about all the locations of the e-stops, okay? So for example, for this machine, you can locate it uh, at the bottom of the work table, right? So the, the red button. So locate uh, the, uh, the, usually red red buttons are for safety. So when you press it, it will immediately cut the power off to the machine. Okay. And uh, safety is the only, like most and only important thing when you're working with any equipment, okay? The others are just details, like to make sure you have good cut conditions and things like that. But first first thing first is safety, okay? And today uh, we will demonstrate to you some basic milling operations. Ideally in face-to-face, -face you have a chance to practice, but this is the best we can do. Okay, for uh, online uh, environment. So we will start with our uh, stock material, aluminum block, as you can see. Okay, and we will have a final component with some slot feature and with some drilling, drilled holes and tapped holes. Okay, so we will uh, first do slot, uh, we will first do shoulder milling so to remove uh, material from the sides at the top. Okay, and then we will go with slotting to create the pocket here. And we will uh, finish by drilling holes and then tap, manually tapping them, which is like a hand tapping also, it's called. And uh, we will uh, finish by just uh, deburring the um, part. And we will have a Kahoot quiz. I will set it up during the session. So, so the pin number is not one, two, three, four, five, six. This is just, well, just a random one. But Kahoot.it, please log in and I will tell you the pin number later. Please use your student ID. That's very important, okay? And uh, well, for this session, we, we are only Furkan and Abizar. So <laughs> you, can, you can name the other one very easily. I'm <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, I just remember that. But, you, you are competing in the session, okay? So you can just uh, know that. And you, there will be one winner today. All right, great. So let's start the session. Do you have any, if you don't have any question, you can start right away, I think. Uh, Ellen, so we can be uh, starting Ellen and Maxim. So Ellen will be the demonstrator today uh, and Maxim will handle the camera. Okay, so what we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to make uh, this component using a series of slots. Uh, we're gonna be shoulder milling, shoulder milling, pockets in, then drill, drill, and tap from rough stock. Firstly, when we get the rough stock from the, uh, the saw, it's gonna come with sharp edges. So we just need to take the sharp edges off using a file. Okay. 
ya. And then what we're going to use, we're going to use a set of grown parallels and put the parallels in the vise. And put the components in the vise. Sat on the parallels. And then we're just going to tap the parallels down because the parallels are moving. So that means the job is not sat down properly. So tap, tap, and this stops the parallels from moving. And the job is now sat in the vice. Hey, hey Alan, uh, can I ask something? Sorry. Uh, so could you could you show them how to use vernier caliper to measure the dimension of this yes rock? yeah maybe we can so ask them to the read it the vice so what we have is a vernier caliper this is metric it's zero to 150 millimeters long and our block is approximately 75 millimeters but this block is actually two inches which is 50.8 and when we are now going to find the, the center of this block using the caliper so I'll, the calipers all you do to measure is put it on tighten and take it off and this is now reading 75 and then the line here is increments. So you've got 75 and you have to line up another line, which will give you this, the actual size. So this is 75 point, I'd say 75.5. It's not, it's not very clear actually. Maybe if you could put it on a, oh yeah, this is better now. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. So you've got your, your 70 and then five along, is 75 and then you go to this bottom dial and you have to line up the lines with the top line and that I read is 75.5 millimeters long so we'll get the uh, the center of the block maybe maybe we can ask them to read this one yes yeah Furkan Avizar can you tell us what you read here Seventy-four. Okay, another Abizar. What's your what's your value? Fifty point nine. Okay, let's hear from Alan. What's the value? Uh, it's not quite fifty point nine because the nine doesn't line up with the top scale. I would say that is fifty point eight. Yes, fifty point eight. Oh, okay. Okay, I think uh, what uh, uh, Furkan, you do 74, uh, you should look for the zero where it matches first and then yeah. go for the second digit. Yeah. Yeah, start from the zero. Sorry. And that will give you 50. Okay. Okay, right. So what we're going right. to do now, right. we're going to find the center of this block using the what we call an end mill. It's got three flutes and it's a, a 12 millimeter diameter end mill. Um, this is high speed steel. So we're going to find the center of this block using our various axes, which we've got is, we've got X, which will go left to right, Y, which goes front to back, and Z, which goes up and down. So I'll bring the Y, X axis over, and as I'm winding the dial, yeah. the dial is also moving. Can you see the dial, uh, Murat? <clears throat> 
Sorry, I was I was muted. <laughs> so the display, I cannot see it, Maxim. Thank you. So I'm going to go closer. So you can see that Alan is moving in the Z direction now. And here the dial is moving. Okay, yeah, that's great. So we did X, now we did we did Z, we do the Z, which is this direction. Oh. So, so, so this dial, so this uh, panel panel there, the display helps us to accurately position the axis. Yeah. You can see that it's 58 point something there. So it's millimeters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn the machine on. And I'm gonna to touch on this side. Uh, I cannot hear. I, I cannot hear. So we do just a light touch on the top and oh. then we do it. So this is for offsetting, right? Like if X, Y, and Z. Right? That's for offsetting X, Y, and Z, right? Yeah, I'm now going to do it in the X direction. Okay, now, now X direction. Okay, put on the side. So you do the text on the side. So as soon as we see some chip, Stop. Yeah. This time we're going to move that. We're going to move the six millimeters because it's the diameter of the tool. So we see her again. So half the length of the material we just measured before. Thirty-seven point five. Thirty-seven point five. Are we moving here? So all I'm going to do is zero, zero, and I'm going to touch on the top face. I'll lightly touch it with a piece of paper using the Z. So once that's touched, wind it off again and come up slowly. Okay, so that is touching. So I'll call the Z zero and mind the Z away. And that's now you set in X, Y, and Z all the axis. So you set the offset in the middle of workpiece, right? The center. The datum is in the middle of the workpiece on the top face. So okay. our first operation is going to be shoulder milling. It's going to be 10 millimeter wide by 12 millimeters deep. I'm going to do that in a series of cuts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wind to 
uh, 31.5 millimeters, which is the edge. And I'm going to wind in 10 millimeters, so that's a, how wide our slot is. So we're going to Y minus 21.5 millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to come to the, the side of the uh, component and we want to be cutting uh, in your direction. It's going to be, we're going to be going left to right because that's the way the, the cutter on the, on the flutes, that's the way the cutter should be cutting, left to right like that. You can't cut that way. You have to cut along with the... Uh, the helix of the uh, end mills. So we'll start up again. And now we're going to go to Z minus one. And take our first one. One step was one deal, so the step is four. No step three. So we we'll include the Z. So eight more. We we'll do another pass. <laughs> now the final step, 12 millimeter. Okay, so that's the first um, step done. We're going to do exactly the same on the opposite side, but this time we're going to use 10 millimeter again, but this time we're all going to go 10 millimeters deep. So uh, we'll wind can, I, can, I ask you, can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, what is the speed that you use, spindle speed? Uh, yes, uh, we, we're currently running at uh, approximately uh, 1,050 RPM. We have a, a spindle speed, I'll, I'll put it on, and we can, if I wind this, 
it, it goes faster and it also goes slower. So, so for smaller, you get smaller the speed, speed from the manufacturer. So we get the, the speed from the manufacturer's catalog. Okay. So we're going to go across and do another shoulder million. So we're going to go Y plus 21.5. And we're going to do the same process, but on this side of the component, to 10 millimetres deep. Camera because of the uh, shape of the helix of the end mill. You can find your stuff at some minute. That's, that's finished the shoulder milling operation on both sides of the component. So, uh, Alan, I just want to have a discussion with the. Yes. So, for safety, we have to make sure for of the safe spindle speed, right? Before. Yes. Cutting. Yeah. yeah that's... We, we get the spindle speeds from the, uh, the catalog of the uh, end mill manufacturer. And also you use like a manual feeding, right? But we can use automatic as we, well. We can use it, but unfortunately this is not working at the moment. That's why okay. I'm not using it. But yeah, we use, this is automatic uh, a feed and you can adjust the feed down here. But unfortunately it's not working. But, but I think for milling, manual feeding is, looks much safer to me. Uh, yes. Yeah, manual manual feeding on a on a manual machine is fine. Yeah, but yeah. we do generally use the uh, the auto feed, so we don't have to keep winding like that. So yeah. it's a lot easier with the feed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was the only like just question. Yeah. Just, just a question about safety. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Right. Okay. So on to the next step. We're going to be creating this slot, what we call uh, pocket milling. 
So I'm going to bring the, the end mill to the, the center of the slot in zero, zero. I'm going to go in minus one millimeters and I'm going to go move it in Y, X, up in X, along in X, sorry, down in Y, back to zero and repeat that so we've got a, a five millimeter depth of slot. So I'll bring <coughs> the end mill back to zero, zero on the dial. Okay. So the Z is still set at zero. So I'm going to turn the, the machine on and the wind from Z minus one. Um, so we're going to come down to X minus 1.5 and then we're going to go across to X 27.5 plus then we're going to go up in Y to Y plus 1.5 then across in X then down and repeat that process five times. So we're moving by So we move in Y1.5 and we move now in X 27.5. See, it's moving on 9. And then we move to Y1.5 plus 1.5. Come back to by minus one point five. And then go to X zero. So we're gonna see that process another couple of times. So we'll get a final cut, which is minus five in Z. Is that minus three Why? Yes. So when we reach x point seven point five, we go y plus five. 
line is 27. Hear me well. One which point minus twenty seven point five. We're going the y direction. Minus two. And then back to zero. And then we go back to zero. A bit, a bit past zero to be sure we can move all the material. So we go up to Z minus five, right? And now we go to Z minus five, yes. Ah, okay. So that is the last part because the pocket should be five millimeters and the Z direction is down. So we go inside. Now we did it. We go to X equal 27.5. And then we move in the Y direction plus 1.5 again. So we just repeat the process for the third time. And now we're going to do y. The y is at 1.5, and then we go x minus 26. Next minus 0.5. So we're going to go in y. Minus 1.5. I don't know if you can see that well on the camera. And uh, then camera the view needs a bit closer to the needs to be closer. Yeah, but I don't think it's like go by the security. So yeah, I know, I know, I know. So don't don't uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now the pocket the pocketing is done and Alan is going to remove. Just yeah, now you can maybe show a little bit closer. That's so you see all the chips. Yeah, these are like a lot of chips generated in this small looking operation. Yeah. So that's now done your side milling, uh, shoulder milling, and a pocket mill. The next step will be. Uh, um, I can take them to the Kahoot quiz, right? So the next, yeah, okay. maybe you can tell the next one. Sorry, Alan, yeah, you can tell. Oh, okay, I'll just take them to quiz now in that case. Yeah, thank you, sorry. I didn't want to interrupt, but uh, are you going to do something else before the session? Uh, sorry, before the break? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna take the, uh, the burr off. We'll start into the I can show you the local handy bearer. Ah, okay. And uh, all we do from come in is we get the tool and you go across and you should be able to see a local bit of uh, swath coming off. And that's yeah. taking the edge off. So this is doing a little bit chamfering there, right? Yeah. It's easy when you took the component out of the device, but I'll show you quickly in the device. Of course, and we I'm have to be- Sharp edges off. Yeah, we have to be careful not to touch the tool, right? When we are <laughs> yeah, the tool as well. When I finish with the tool, I also put the cover back on because we've now finished with this tool. I'm going to be to changing this tool for the uh, the drill afterwards. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just take them to quiz now. Thank you. Okay. We'll be back soon, I think. Uh, so everyone, yeah, so you can uh, go to the quiz now. I, th I see that you are already signed in. So... Let's go. So you will see the questions in the, on the screen. All right, so let's start. We will have three questions to start with and then later we will have another three.
which personal protective equipment is absolutely essential when working on a milling machine? So which PPE is absolutely, okay. So yeah, it's goggles. Correct, it's absolutely essential, you're right. All right, so next one. Okay, I think Furkan is leading for now. Let's see. Where do we fix the workpiece on a manual milling machine? So red is spindle chuck, blue is work table, yellow is vice clamp, green is tool holder. Uh, yeah, it's it's vice clamp because we actually fix the vice clamp on the work table, like yeah, depending on the machine. But it's yeah. Okay, so let's go to next. Okay, Vulcan is leading now. So it's a true or false question. An edge finder, as well as a piece of paper, could be used to locate a work piece. Is this true or false? Yes, it's true. It's true, definitely. You can also use a piece of paper. So let's see now where we are at. Okay, it's, it's, you're closing the... Okay, great. <laughs> well, you have three correct answer. So you, let's go back to the uh, milling. Hello? Maxine? Yeah. Okay. So we can, uh, so I, I think yeah. until the break, we, we can do some more or are we done? Like for the... No, we've still got the drilling and tapping to do. Yeah, but it can be after the break, right? Yeah. So, uh, Furkan Abizar, do you have any question? Until now. So we have done shoulder milling. Like we clean the top face sides and we do, we did the slotting. We created the pocket in the middle, but before all that, no questions so far. Okay, so before all that, we actually did the setting up, right? We've set the offsets and um, like we located the workpiece, set the offsets, put the tool in the machine. So these are all like preparation time. And that also, we spent some time on those. And uh, uh, at the end, uh, Alan did some deburring as well with the hand tool. So, okay, so that's good. Uh, the remaining operations are drilling and tapping. So, uh, what I suggest now is we can have a 10 minute break and then meet again at 1.55. Is that, is that okay? Uh, Ellen, yeah? Okay. Yeah, 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 fine. So, uh, okay, so we'll meet, but we'll start at two. We'll start at 2 p.m. Two, okay. okay. Uh, so in that case, uh, we can, uh, and have a rest now and meet again around 155 or 2. Okay. Thank you. See you. Okay. I'll pause the recording for now. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I know I'm just asking the uh, attendants if they have any questions. So let's please use this five five minutes or so to uh, reflect on the previous hour. So we have we we have seen how to set up a operation in a machine and how to do the operation. So if you have any question. Let's, we can discuss.
For example, last session we got question about CNC machines. Uh, yes, we have a lot of CNC machines in the workshop, but we use manual machines to train the students. And this is a this machine is a part of the work the student workshop practice area, which was newly designed. Um, so there are a couple of manual milling machines, manual late bench top working tools and welding equipment in this area. So if you could have come this year, you would have seen this area, but unfortunately we couldn't uh, do the physical sessions. Hi, Ellen. Are you there? Oh yeah. Now, Ellen, do you mind showing them? Do you mind showing them how to do the e-stop? Just I should do what? The, Sorry. When the machine is operating, do you can you do emergency stop to show them how it how it how it works? Maybe it's interesting to see that. <clears throat> Okay, so we have three different uh, roofing beds. It's passed as emergency stop, so I can press that, and that stops the, the cutter. I cannot also use this with the cutter going, so it seems like it's off the it Oh, that also stops. Uh -huh. And also, we've got a kick down at the bottom. Uh, Maxim, can you show it a little bit more? It's oh. Normally, the red, the red bar on the bottom should be working, so there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's probably because it's not forced to go into the ground. But generally, we just use that as a stop of the red bar. And you can't turn it on now. It's been a while to why the, uh, the guards are open. So when the guard is open, the machine will not start? Yeah. It's not functional. We, you can't press the button for the machine to rotate while the guards uh, are open. Yeah, okay, great. So I think uh, uh, we can start the remaining of the Okay, yeah. yeah, so please go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Right, so what we're going to do now, we've got six holes, which uh, are going to be drilled and tapped. We're going to drill it on the machine, but we're going to be tapping it manually using a tap of the tap wrench. So what we need to do now, we need to change the tool. And by doing that, we if I try to undo this, 
in the gear we have, it's just going to be spinning. So what we have is a low gear and high gear. We always put it in low gear. And you can't turn that by hand. So simply undo. So you can feel the drawbar is loose. And then just tap it. The machine, the, uh, the tool comes out. The tool is located in the drawbar on a screw fed and also located on a key. So it stops it spinning in the spindle. So the next tool is the drill. This is done the drill chuck, and um, we're using a drill for an M5 tap. So this is a 4.2 millimeter drill. So again, it's just um, repeating the process of putting tool in. The draw bar, the draw the tool up, put the tool in, and then we'll just start on the tool. Draw that. So now we've changed the tool. What we need to do is reset the Z because it's a different tool. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to come along on the top face, touch on again with my piece of paper, and recalculate the Z. So anywhere on the top face where we've not uh, been machining. So once again, use a piece of paper until you can feel it touch the piece of paper. Now it's got the piece of paper. So I, I wind off again slightly and come back on slowly. And that's got the piece of paper. And as you can see on the dial, it's showing Z50.3. So all we're going to do is press Z0. And that has now got the length we need for the tool. So we're going to do a series of holes, take everything off the table. So we're going to do a series of holes, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the drawing is fully dimensioned up. So all we're going to do is come from the zero in Y and go, it's showing 11 millimeters to F this hole on Y zero. So, sorry, X zero. So first of all, I'm going to say X zero. And I'm going to move to y plus 11. Because it's still 0, 0 in the center in x and y. It's only the z what has changed for the tool. So that is the position of our first hole when we're going to be drilling. So I'll bring it a bit closer. Um, and now put the tool on. Uh, what I'm actually going to do, I've got a bit of lubrication spray. It's helped with cutting, so I'm going to put a bit of spray on this drill. So, again. <laughs> So I need to go back in 
So we weren't in the wrong gear, just repeat because it was, was really in the wrong gear. I'm still in law the... from the tool change. So I'll now put the gear back in high. And now it's back in high gear. And now the spindle would have gone a lot faster. So when they do that this long, so on the on the set dial, we're going to set the first one is 20 millimeters deep. So we go here, Z minus 20. And that's our first hole, what has just been drilled. So I'm going to repeat the process number five times. So a bit more spray on the drill. I move over to our next hole. It's thirty-three point five millimeters. So this value, thirty-three point five, can be seen on the technical drawing, just so that you understand what we are doing. Yes. So now I'll do the second hole. So we are Yeah, and now we're going to move to the opposite side. So this is going to be Y minus 11 millimeters. It's not necessary. So what is the what is the spindle speed, uh, uh, Alan, for drilling? The spindle speed is slightly faster, uh, eleven hundred uh, RPM. So it's slightly faster than the. Uh, so I can give it. So <laughs> yeah. Your, your okay. Line. 1,100? Yes. So I can give a task. Again, this is in the, uh, the technical catalog. Okay. So I can give a task to uh, Abizar and Furkan. So what is the tool diameter here? Uh, 4.2 millimeters. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so Abizar and Furkan, so can you calculate the surface speed here? So you remember there's a formula. pi d n divided by 1000, right? So d, we know that d is 4.2, right? And n, we know that 1100. So can you calculate the v? So 
So just a minute or two. Are you there? Yeah, here we are here. No, 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 not, not you. I'm asking you. I'm a student. And I was not sure who you talked oh, to. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Thank you. 0 0.0145 meter per second. Uh, the unit may have a mistake. Um, the unit may have a problem. Uh, also, your why meter per second, by the way, but both of them, both of your answers are not really the correct. Let me see. Uh, maybe this one is correct. No, both of them are not really because when you look at that, the pi has no unit, right? And D has millimeter and other one is revolution per minute. So millimeter per minute, right? And we divide by thousand. So it becomes meter per minute. So the, the one, the result I find is 14.5 meter per minute. So please check your, <clears throat> check your calculation. Yeah. And this one is the maximum uh, surface speed because drilling, I convert, yeah. Oh, no, 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 you don't have to. Yeah, great, yeah. So I think now you got it. And in drilling, the, in the middle, there is no uh, speed, speed, right? No surface speed. So it's zero in the middle. And in the outer diameter, it, we find that it is 14.5. So uh, the average surface speed in the middle of the radius is around 7.25 meter per minute, right? Yeah, so this is what we are using for this uh, cutter at the moment. So just, just to have a refresh, refreshing your mind uh, for this kind of calculations, okay? So we can continue. Yeah, thank you. We can continue, I think, Alan. Okay. So I will carry on with the first one. So what I'm going to do is, again, just a bit of lubrication. And start the hole.
Okay, not all the holes, bro. Um, I'll turn it off this way. Yeah. By the way, Alan, that was lubricant, right? But the one you spray. Yes. Um, it's yeah, multi-purpose cutting oil. Uh, we use it for drilling and tapping mainly, uh, but other people also use it on. Uh, you can grind or they can use it on the lathe. There's, you've got a local nozzle spray or there's a, a large nozzle for a wider spray. This is localized oh. spraying. This is like a general purpose spray. No, oh, this is nice, neat, very neat. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just clean it down. Normally we'd have a, an airline. But for health and safety, we can't have one in the work, in the student workshop. So I'll try and get all the chips out. Uh, I'll just move this out of the way now. We've got the lubrication off. Okay, so that's been drilled. The final stage is going to be tapping. Uh, we're going to be tapping it by hand. Um, we've received the tap. They normally come in a box. And you normally get a set of three. Sometimes you get a set of two. Uh, because there's three different stages for tapping. We've got what we call a first tap. We've got a middle tap. And then we've got a final tap. And there's two ways you can see them to identify them is by the first tap. I don't know if you can see that it has, it will have a really big lead on it. Uh, I'll compare it to the final tap. Uh, Ellen, Ellen, when you yes. say lead, what can you maybe uh, talk a bit more on that? Like you mean there is a kind of a smaller diameter at the tip of the uh, tool? Uh, yeah, I was, we're trying to get it on the camera. Um, I'm trying to compare them. If you, I don't know if you can see the two different uh, taps. The bottom one is the first tap where there's no threads to start off with, but it comes oh, into yeah. a chamfer and then you start cutting along. Whereas this tap, the last tap, start your threads are at the front. So last step is for finishing. Yeah, this is for finishing. This is for starting. Uh, this, this helps because if you put this in the hole, it helps you to get a 90 degrees to the component. If we just started with the, the final tap, it's very difficult. 
it will just it will just be oh, yeah. it, a bit like that. Be, so yeah, it will be much more forced, right? Yeah. yeah. So the first one actually sits in it slightly compared to that one. That one won't sit in. If I just left that there, it'll just keep falling. Whereas this one sits in. And then once we get a tap wrench, this is the tap wrench. And it locates on the squares at the end of the tap in the tap wrench. So you locate them on the V. Can't see that. And then you just tighten it with your hands. It only moves, there's only one jaw that moves for different size of taps. So you can't, you can't put it like that, otherwise it's just gonna slip. So you need to put it in the, uh, the points. And now that, it can't move anywhere. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the first hole. Again, a bit of lubrication. Sometimes I even put it in the hole. And I'm just gonna move the tool away. So what we need to do, you sit the tap in and you need to keep this as square as possible in both directions. Whilst adding a little pressure whilst you're rotating to create the thread. So it's just the first couple of turns which are critical of keeping the tap square to the component. And then once the tap has done a couple of turns, it just kind of feeds itself if you add a little pressure to it. So we'll take this one down to the bottom of the thread and I'll, I'll show you, as soon as it hits the bottom, you can't add any pressure, otherwise we'll, we'll snap the tap. So I'll go down to the bottom and it stops. If I now force that, the tap would snap. So come back out the opposite direction. And that's now created the first thread. So, I don't think we'll see that. So, so what's the... In, but I'm not sure you're going to see. Oh, okay. So let's check the thread. Yeah, not easy to see, I think. No, no. I'm sorry. But imagine that there's a thread inside, okay? <laughs> so, Alan, can I ask a question? So it, the pitch of yes. this thread, every time you turn the tapping wrench once, you go one pitch, right? Uh, yes. Um, so this is an M5, um, which is 0.7 pitch. So each turn is going 0.7 millimeters deep. So if you can calculate how deep you need it for 15 millimeters, you can also calculate how many turns you need for depth of 15 millimeters. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. So I'll do another hole. This is still using the first tap as a large chamfer on the front to help keep the tap square to the component. First couple of threads are critical. And then once 
you feel you've got a thread forming, you can go slightly faster. But you don't want to go too fast because you'll feel you'll hit the bottom. So always keep minimum pressure. I can actually do that with one hand like that. And then just hit the bottom. Again, if I force that any further, my tap would break. So again, bring it out. So when you're tapping, it feels like very light force you're applying. Yeah, the, it's surprisingly little force on the tap for creating a thread. And these and the taps are really, really weak as well. So if I added more pressure on that, it, it snapped like a carrot. They're really, really um, <laughs> soft, these. You have to be really careful. Yeah. So maybe I can... So the last one is f final thread, right? You will do the uh, finishing. Uh, yes. The final tap. Oh, oh we'll do. Uh, We're going to change it. Uh, I think I think I can take them to quiz first. And okay. Yeah. Thank you. So let's go to quiz, um, everyone. So we will have. Three more, uh, two more questions. Okay, so let's see. I hope you are ready now, so I will start. So which one is the basic characteristic of a milling machine? Uh, red is rotating tool, blue is feed motion, yellow is air supply, and green is coolant supply. So you have some time for this. Oh, yeah, uh, rotating tool because milling milling machine actually cannot be uh, imagined without the rotating tool. So that's the characteristic. And for other machines, uh, for example, late you can have rotating workpiece. Um, feed motion, yes, but in a late also we have feed motion. Basically, in every since uh, every machine we have feed motion, even in a drill press, feed motion is in that direction. Yeah, so let's go to the next question. Oh, now Abizar come back. So you can see it's never like, it's never late for catching up. Okay, so next question. What is it called when the end mill opens a feature using full diameter? Red is slotting, blue is rubbing, yellow is pocketing, and green is shoulder milling. Okay. It is slotting because uh, slot cutting, slot milling, uh, this, this is the special name for the full diameter uh, cutting with the end mill. Pocketing is a very generic term. Uh, it means that your machining uh, feature which has a uh, cloth boundaries. So you can have a pocket, which is a slot, but you cannot have a slotting all the time for a pocket. So um, pocketing can be made without slotting operation. So we will have a, another question uh, in the last, but uh, before that, let's check the, okay. So last question will be the kind of, Critical one. Okay, let's go back to the milling session. So we can continue. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So now we're going to use the final tap, which doesn't have as much of a lead on the front. And this also um, makes it to size, because on the first tap, even on the, the diameter, 
it is not a finished size. So if you just use the previous tap and try to put a bolt in there, your bolt wouldn't go in. So you need to you need to use the final tap also. So once again, bit of spray. And this should follow the previous thread we created. So oops. This will now follow the thread from the previous tap. And it's still making some little chips because it's now making this to the right um, diameter of five millimeters. Again, just little pressure. You don't want to snap the tap, so just winding and down. Sometimes you can feel it snagging, so you'd wind the tap away and then carry on winding. And that's hit the bottom. If I went any further again, I'd snap the tap. So I will wind back out. And this time, I'm going to do our final haul. So first couple of turns are critical to find the, the thread. And soon the, the taps found the thread, you can go slightly faster, but don't put any pressure on. And that's, no, that's not at the bottom. Sometimes it feels like it's at the bottom because swarth and the chips get trapped in the bottom of the thread. So that could be misleading, but you don't want to be putting too much pressure on. I think that's at the bottom. But Ellen, can I ask you... a question about this one? Actually, yes. you made a good point. Like if there are chips inside stuck, so is there a like easy way to remove them? Well, the only way you can remove them with, is with an airline. So, unfortunately, we don't have an airline in the workshop and the students. Airline, okay. So, yeah. air pressure. You, yeah. you just put an airline down the hall and a, a jet of uh, air will take the, uh, the chips out. Great, yeah. But unfortunately, we're not allowed one in the, uh, the student workshop. Oh, yeah, okay. So, that's, so I'm just using a brush for remove all the chips, which is good enough. And you might be able you might be able to get that now. Can you get a better focus on that? Should be you should be able to see it this time. Okay. <laughs> like if you take oh, this yeah, it can be. Yeah, top yeah, one can you can be. see. Yeah. So I think everyone can see the thread there. I try to have a good focus. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah, but I think this is much easier to see. It's kind of see there's some reflection. Yeah, no, I can see, I can see, but I'm, I'm sure. I guess I can do. <laughs> I can also see, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the final step is really now, um, I can tap a couple more holes if you wish, or we can just take the component out and I'll debur it out of the vice. Yeah, I think uh, we don't need to tap anymore. Okay. Uh, so right? if I remove the component and just do uh, debur yeah. the sharp edges. 
Yeah, I think if the attendance is okay, uh, like the the if our colleagues here are okay, we can just remove the part. So removing the part will we will lose the reference, right? If we remove the part, we lose the reference. Uh, yes, sometimes what we we can set um, a stop. Uh, if you're doing like production, we can you can uh, have a magnetic stop and leave it on the rough edge. So you can take the component out and put a new component onto the stop. But uh, for this uh, session, all we're going to do is obviously take it out, deburr, and then when we put the next one in, it'll be going back to resetting zero, zero in X and Y. Sure, yeah. Okay, so I think we can remove it. So nobody uh, having question. Uh, let's remove it and show maybe the last steps of uh, as you said, the burn. Thank you. Uh, I I'll just give it a quick wipe because it can be quite greasy with um, the cotton oil. Clean all the chips. So, right now the edges are like knife, right? Yeah, uh, there's really sharp edges. I don't know if you can see, but if you go close, you can see it's really sharp. Oh, yeah. So it's not. And as soon as I use this tool, yeah. All it's going to do is take the sharp edge away. Okay. So this is a very important safety uh, step. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it is hard. And now. You can see yeah. there's, a, there's a little chunk for there. Yeah, so this deburring tool is so, so good. Yeah, and these are very sharp as well. Uh, it's right for you. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've, I've caught myself many times with these. Oh. Now, deburring tool is like a cutter, right? I mean, in this sense. Uh, yeah. Like if you can see the chip, the chip coming that? away from with the tool. chip. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's quite. Yeah, that's he is amazing. really putting a lot of force on it. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if you can tell, but he is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's he's, good. These are quite difficult to use. <laughs> nice. So this is like shaving ice. Uh, yes, that's all it is. <laughs> but you showed before that this tool is also very good for the holes, right? Uh, yes, um, what you could do you can put it in the hole. It's, it's a bit difficult because it has a bit of a, a ball on the end. So it's not the easiest tool to use, but you can buy off, uh, separate blades for holes for different applications. Uh -huh. so you, you can do it, but it's, it's not really the best method of getting a chamfer on the hole. Uh -huh. okay, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can do it on the pocket again. Oh, we're going to go around the pocket. Just follow the edge. And it takes material okay. off. And now that's fully. Um, what we, yeah, we call it the bird. Because there's no, what we call, the sharp edges, they call burrs. Mm -hmm. So now I can run my finger along that and I'm not going to cut myself. Yeah, now it's very safe to handle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can run, yeah. I can't cut myself now. If I did that previously, I'd have a big, I'd have a cut. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so that's, that's finished. Okay, that's that's very good. If you want to see all the steps, yes, uh, 
Straight. Yeah, let's remember. Yeah. Okay. And we have all the step here. Oh, uh, we have a question. Why not we use a file? Yeah. Yes, you can use a file. Yes. Yeah, definitely. We found these, okay. uh, the, the little handy bows are really handy. Uh, the far easier, because you, you, you can use a file. Yeah. File is safer for the edges, I think, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. But the tool that you use probably is safer for the holes. Uh, yes. Yeah. But again, we, in the workshop, we do use the uh, handy bear for all around the edges. Yeah, but you're you professional, right? Files. Yeah, I think for professional use, yeah, edges can be done by hand debugging. But I think for student, uh, maybe file, yeah, it's much easier. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a good question, Abizar. Yeah. Okay, uh, please go, go ahead. Yeah, let's remember the steps before ending. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a step from the block, the first shoulder here, two shoulders, and the pocketing, and here the last part, and we drill the hole and tap them. Yes, exactly. So uh, we we, did, we see quite a lot today. Uh, let's go to quiz before uh, ending the session. So let me ask you one more question. Okay, so I hope that you're ready. Which operation we did not see today? So red is drilling, blue is tapping, yellow is slotting, green is facing. Oh, okay, great, yeah, facing or face milling. We didn't see this operation today, but we could do it. Um, it's for preparing the surfaces, right? But we didn't do it today. So let's see who is the winner. Okay, third, there's no rank, of course. But <laughs> let's see who is second. Ah, okay, Abizar, yeah. Well, you're so close. Both of you give very good answers. Uh, yeah, it was enjoying to have you uh, competing. <laughs> but both answers, I would say, kind of correct, but we had to have one answer, one correct answer. So congratulations, uh, Furkan, yeah. Okay, so I'll stop sharing. But <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, uh, Thank you very much for joining and thank you, Alan. Thank you, Maxime, for uh, keep like conducting the session there. And uh, yeah, so Abizar Furkan, you are uh, free to go now. Uh, you, your attendance is recorded. Thank you. I stop recording now. <laughs>